This is lesson two of Parent Band, and today we'll be adding quite a bit of new material. We'll be covering correct hand position, making our first sounds on the full instrument, how to read a fingering chart, our first three notes, and our first song. Just like the first video, I recommend using the links in the description to jump to your instrument. If you're a percussionist, you can skip this entire lesson. A special percussion only video is headed your way soon. For everyone else, scroll down and click your link to get started. Holding the flute, especially for fifth grade beginners, can be very challenging just because of the size and because of how many fingers are needed for every, um, to play every note. When you set your mouthpiece, the flute actually balances between your right thumb pushing forwards and your chin holding it in place. It kind of um, has a fulcrum on your left hand. So you should be able to hold the flute up with just your right thumb pushing forward and balancing it under your chin. In class, I tell the flutes one, two, three, one, pinky. I say it over and over again. And what I'm talking about is our fingers starting close to our face. We don't put a finger on the very high button, okay? We go the next one, one, skip one, two, three, one, pinky. So your left pinky isn't pressing anything down and your naughty finger and ring finger in your right hand do not press anything down. One, two, three, one, pinky. Also, our thumb is going to push down a button on the back. We don't push down on the circle, we use the other button. So then we combine the balancing act of holding the flute with pushing down the buttons. Thumb on the back, one, two, three, one, pinky. I'll say set your fingers, that means actually push down the buttons. Then I'll ask you to check your posture and set your mouthpiece. And then one big breath, long note. Okay, some really common problems for flute players at the beginning have to do with posture. Because the instrument is so big, we tend to get twisted. Some particularly small flute players try to put the head joint on their shoulder, okay, or they get their face twisted a little bit, or they dip their chin. All of those things adjust the direction of the airstream coming out of your mouth. And remember, when we play it on our head joint, we want the air going across the hole. So you have to have it right in the center of your mouth and shoot your air across the tone hole. It's good to kind of go back and forth between the head joint and the assembled flute at the beginning just to make sure it feels right um, with what you're doing with your embouchure, how you hold your um, face. So try that again. Thumb on the back, one, two, three, one, pinky. Check your posture. Set your mouthpiece. Big breath. Great. Now did you hear how my sound sounded too high and then it fell down? That has to do with how fast my air was moving. If you hear too high of a sound, try slowing your air down and it should drop down to a lower sound. Now if you get a really low sound, that means you need faster air. We're aiming for right in the middle. Try it again, set your fingers, thumb on the back, one, two, three, one, pinky. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece, big breath. Every student has received a fingering chart in class. This is an extremely important tool for learning to play our first notes. They have also received a band folder. Both items should come with students to class every single day. In the description under this video is a link to an online resource archive where you can print your own copy or a replacement as needed. The first note on our fingering chart is D and that calls for no pointer finger in our left hand and no pinkies. All of the other buttons are going to be pressed down. Notice that I don't move my fingers over different buttons. They stay over the same buttons all the time. My thumb is also still pressing the same button on the back as the first sounds that we played. 
Let's try a few practice notes of the high note on our fingering chart. That's the one at the top of the page, D. So remember, no pointer finger, thumb on the back, two, three, one, two, three, no pinky. Okay, so you set your fingers, push them down, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. The middle note on our fingering chart is C. For that, we're gonna have our pinky down, our pointer finger, and nothing else. This is a very tricky note for getting your fingers set unless you have the head joint on your chin. That makes it a little easier to balance. So, set it on your face, pointer finger, pinky, no thumb on the back, big breath. And you should hear that note is lower than the first note. Our bottom note on our fingering chart is a B flat, and we need left pointer finger, our thumb on the back, right pointer finger, and pinky. This is a little bit more comfortable of a note to play for beginner flute players. Pointer finger, thumb on the back, pointer finger, pinky, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. <laughs> And that's the lowest of the three, which is why it's on the bottom of the fingering chart. Let's try all three notes in order. We'll go high, switch your fingers, middle, switch your fingers, low. So we're going to have a little time in there for you to think about how to switch your fingers. Okay? Set your fingers for the high note. Two, three, one, two, three. Uh, check your posture. Set your mouthpiece. Switch, switch, you might have noticed all of my fingers are moving at the same time. That's really important. A lot of beginners will think about it one finger at a time when they switch, which is, uh, it takes a lot more time and you'll get some weird sounds if you don't have all the fingers move at exactly the same time. Try again. High, middle, low, a little bit faster between the notes this time. Start with the high note, two, three, one, two, three. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Okay, and now with no space in between the notes. Set your fingers again for the high note. Two, three, one, two, three. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. You may have noticed those first three notes actually are the beginning of a song. buns. So, the beginning is actually really easy. High, middle, low. We've already played that, but in the song you're going to do it two times in a row. Let's try playing that together. High, middle, low. High, middle, low. Set your fingers for that high note. Two, three, one, two, three. Check your posture. Set your mouthpiece. the song is a little different. It goes low, 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 middle, 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 middle. Try just that part. Set your fingers for the low note, thumb on the back, pointer finger, pointer finger, pinky. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. And then the end of the song is just like the beginning. High, middle, low. So let's think through the whole song. And we're going to do something I call finger in sync. We're going to move our fingers like we're playing, but instead of blowing air, we're going to actually sing high, middle, and low. It's okay if you're not a great singer, neither am I. Uh, for flute people, 
Um, fingering and singing can be a lot easier if you rest your head joint on your shoulder. Um, that kind of helps with balance. So set your fingers for that high note. Two, three, one, two, three. And here comes the whole song. High, middle, low. Same thing again. High, middle, low. Stay down there. Low, 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 low. Middle, 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 middle. High, middle, low. If you did a good job with the fingers, go ahead and play along with me this time. If you think you still need a little bit of practice on the fingers, go ahead and finger again. So, if you're, uh, well, everyone set your fingers. Two, three, one, two, three. Check your posture. If you're going to play along with me, go ahead and set your mouthpiece. playing your first song. Go ahead and scroll back down to the description and click on rhythm reading to make it to the end of this video. Playing our combined clarinet. First, we have to make sure we're holding it the right way. We're going to use our right thumb on the thumb rest underneath the back here. So it should sit right above your thumbnail. That's going to feel kind of uncomfortable at first, but it's really important you don't let it slide farther over on your thumb because um, that will make playing um, some notes very, very difficult. So, thumb goes under the thumb rest right about on your thumbnail. For right now, your left hand can just grab the barrel up top, check your posture, set your mouthpiece just like when we play on the mouthpiece in the barrel, teeth on top. Try again. Set your mouthpiece. Some common mistakes for beginners when we start playing on the, on the full clarinet is we dip our chin, which makes it really hard to make a sound, okay? Or we bring the clarinet too far out or too close to our body, okay? Both of those will make it really hard to make a sound, or you'll get the squeal of death. So, try to make it feel the same way it did when we played on our mouthpiece. Only now we're holding the whole instrument. Every student has received a fingering chart in class. This is an extremely important tool for learning to play our first notes. They have also received a band folder. Both items should come with students to class every single day. In the description under this video is a link to an online resource archive where you can print your own copy or a replacement as needed. We're going to start with the highest note on your fingering chart. That's the one at the top of the page. Remember, the colored in circles means you push those buttons down. So, to play an E, you're going to put your thumb over the circle on the back and your pointer finger over the circle on the front. Try to keep your other fingers spread out. To play the middle note on your fingering chart, D, you're going to add one more finger. So your thumb is still covering the back, pointer finger is still down, and you add naughty finger on the next open hole. Some students will try to put their finger over um, this metal circle here, make sure that you reach to the next open circle. For the bottom note on the fingering chart C, you're going to add one more finger. So thumb on the back, pointer finger, naughty finger, ring finger, all covering the holes. For all three notes, your right hand is just holding up the instrument with your thumb under the thumb rest. Let's try putting all three notes together. We'll go high, switch your fingers, middle, switch your fingers, low. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Good 
Good. Let's do that again with a little bit less time in between each note. Set your fingers for that high note. Actually, push down the buttons. Check your posture. Set your mouthpiece. Okay? And now with no time in between each note. Set your fingers for the high note. Check your posture. Those first three notes are actually the beginning of the first song that we're going to learn. High, middle, low. High, middle, low. Low, 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 low. Middle, 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 middle. High, middle, low. That's right, hot cross buns. So, the first part are the three notes that we already played, high, middle, low, but you're going to do it two times in a row. Let's try that part of the song. Set your fingers for the high note, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Good job. The middle part. Low, 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 middle, 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 middle. So set your fingers for the low note. Thumb on the back, one, two, three. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. And then the end is just like the beginning. High, middle, low. Let's try the entire song, but we're going to do something called finger in sync, which means you move your fingers like you're playing, but instead of blowing through the instrument, you actually sing the high, middles, and lows. And it's okay if you're not a good singer, you don't have to be really loud. So set your fingers for the high note, thumb on the back, pointer finger on the front, and we're doing all of hot cross buttons. High, middle, low, same thing again. High, middle, low, stay down there. Low, 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 middle, 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 high, middle, low. Great. If you feel comfortable with moving your fingers like that, go ahead and try to play along with me. If you made some mistakes and you want another chance to practice it, go ahead and do your fingers again. Set your fingers for the top note. Set your mouthpiece. Great job playing your first song. Go ahead and scroll back down to the description and click on Rhythm Reading to make it to the end of this video. When holding a fully assembled saxophone, there's only a couple mistakes that most beginners make. The first is having the neck strap too high or too low. The goal of a properly adjusted neck strap is for it to hold the weight of the instrument and let your hands just swing the mouthpiece into your mouth. For example, right now, if I were to try to play, I would have to hold the instrument's entire weight with my thumbs to move the mouthpiece to my mouth, or I'd have to sit with really bad posture. So, we want to tighten the neck strap to a point where it just swings into our mouth. Your right thumb is going to go under the thumb hook down here, left thumb goes on the black circle. Another common mistake is to have our mouthpiece slightly crooked, which makes students tip their head. So, we want to make sure that when we check our posture, we bring the instrument to our mouth, not our mouth to the instrument. Some saxophone students uh, choose to play with the saxophone off to the side, which is totally fine, but in that case, you do need to twist the mouthpiece so that you can still sit with good posture and have the neck strap swing the instrument into your mouth. Every student has received a fingering chart in class. This is an extremely important tool for learning to play our first notes. They have also received a band folder. Both items should come with students to class every single day. 
In the description under this video is a link to an online resource archive where you can print your own copy or a replacement as needed. Unfortunately, my example saxophone is not functioning at a very high level right now. So, for saxophone players, I'm going to ask for you to scroll down to the description and click on the clarinet link because the clarinet fingerings are very similar to the alto sax fingerings for our first song. When we're ready to play on our fully assembled trumpet, we're going to hold it with just our left hand. We use these three fingers to wrap around the valves. Our ring finger is going to go in the ring and your pinky can hang out on the side or wrap underneath. Either one is fine. Then check your posture, set your mouthpiece, big breath. Remember, mm, lips in a straight line, no puffy cheeks. Try again, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. common mistake for trumpets trying to make their first sound is they get the wrong uh, pitch out of the instrument. So the note we're aiming for, a lot of students will start off playing this note. The difference is the note is lower and the way that we fix that is with faster air and making sure that we don't let our lips roll out at the corners. A good way to check this is just playing on our mouthpiece. You can even get in front of a mirror in the bathroom and check your corners and if it's rolling out you'll see it right away and it's easy to fix. So mmm, lips, no puffy cheeks, and aim for the high note. When we're ready to add our right hand to the trumpet we're going to take our right thumb and it goes between first and second valve. Then we'll put fingers one, two, three on the valves and our pinky is going to sit on top of the hook. There's a long reason for why we don't put it inside the hook, but for now, just trust me and keep it on top of the hook. This should make a nice curve in your fingers, kind of like a backward C. And when we press down the buttons, we're going to press with the very tips of our fingers. Every student has received a fingering chart in class. This is an extremely important tool for learning to play our first notes. They have also received a band folder. Both items should come with students to class every single day. In the description under this video is a link to an online resource archive where you can print your own copy or a replacement as needed. The first note we're going to play on our trumpet is the top note on your fingering chart, an E. So for that, you can see on the fingering chart, the first two circles are colored in, so we're gonna press down the first valve and the second valve. Okay. When I say in class, set your fingers, I mean I need you to actually push down those buttons. Then I'll say check your posture, set your mouthpiece. <sighs> Compared to the first note that we played on our trumpet, this one is a little bit lower, which means you shouldn't have to work as hard to get the fast air. Try again, set your fingers, one and two. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. <sighs> The middle note on our fingering chart is a D, and you press down 1 and 3. Now there's something special about this note. On the fingering chart you'll see the words kick it, and that's talking about our third valve slide, which has the ring on it. So when I say kick it, I mean that you're going to open your hand a little bit to push the third valve slide out. So set your fingers, actually push down the buttons, kick your slide just a little bit, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Now this is a lower note than the first one you played, which means your air is going to be a little bit slower than the first one. For the bottom note, it's very easy. You're gonna go with no fingers and really slow air. Let's try all three in order. So we'll go high, middle, low, and we'll give you a little time to switch your fingers in between each one. Set your fingers for the high note, press one and two. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Switch to one and three, kick your slide. Switch to no fingers. And our air slows down for each note. Let's try that again, but a little less time between each note. Set your fingers for the top note, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. One more
more time, but even less time in between each note. Set your fingers for the top note, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. <laughs> Those first three notes are actually going to be the beginning of the first song that we learn. Hot cross buns. It starts with those same three notes. High, middle, low, but you do it two times. High, middle, low. Let's try playing just that part. Set your fingers for the high note. Check your posture. Set your mouthpiece. The middle part is low, 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 middle, 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 middle. Try playing that part. Set your fingers for the low note. Set your mouthpiece. And then the ending is just like the beginning. High, middle, low. Let's try the whole song, but we're going to do something I call finger in sync. And that means we're going to press down the buttons like we're playing, but instead of blowing through the instrument, you're actually going to sing the high, middles, and lows. It's okay if you're not a very good singer. No one will know. So start with your finger set for the high note. Here we go. High, middle, low. Same thing again. High, middle, low, stay down there, low, 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 middle, 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 high, middle, low. We're going to do it again. If you feel good about your fingers, go ahead and play along with me. If you think you need another uh, chance to practice it, go ahead and just do your fingers in sync. Everybody set your fingers for the high note, one and two. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Great job playing your first song. Go ahead and scroll back down to the description and click on Rhythm Reading to make it to the end of this video. When we're ready to play our fully assembled French horn, your left pinky is going to go in the hook, then you'll have one, two, three fingers over the buttons, and your thumb is on top of the trigger. Your right hand is actually going to go inside the bell, and you're going to hold the instrument up with that hand. The first note that we're going to play on our horn is a high note, but all you're going to do is press the thumb button, the trigger, check your posture and set your mouthpiece. That's a pretty high note. Most students who are trying out will get a note that's lower than that. All of those are incorrect. You want to make sure that you have mm, lips in a straight line, no puffy cheeks, and really, really fast air. Every student has received a fingering chart in class. This is an extremely important tool for learning to play our first notes. They have also received a band folder. Both items should come with students to class every single day. In the description under this video is a link to an online resource archive where you can print your own copy or a replacement as needed. We're going to start with the highest note on your fingering chart, which is an A, and you'll see the fingers are colored in for one and two, that's pointer finger and naughty finger, and then there's a T for trigger, so you're going to press it down with your thumb, your pointer finger, and your naughty finger. In class, the instructions I'll give are to set your fingers. Let's start with that high note. When I say set your fingers, you're actually going to push down the buttons, so trigger, one, two. Then I'll ask you to check your posture and set your mouthpiece. Big breath. The middle note, no fingers. It's just a tiny bit lower than the first one. And then the bottom note, first finger by itself, still a little bit lower. 
let's try all three of those together. So it'll go high, switch your fingers, middle, switch your fingers, low, with a little bit of space between each one to give you time to get ready. Set your fingers for the high note, trigger one, two. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Let's try those three notes again, uh, this time with a little bit less time in between them. Set your fingers, trigger one, two. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Those three notes are actually the beginning of the first song that we're going to learn. High cross buns. High, middle, low. The same thing we just played, but you're going to do it two times in a row. Let's try playing that together. Set your fingers for the high note, trigger one, two. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. The middle part is low, 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 middle, 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 middle. Let's try that part together. Set your finger. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Let's try that part together. Set your finger, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. is just like the beginning. High, middle, low. Let's try the whole song, but we're going to do something I call finger and sing, which means you're going to move your fingers like you're playing, but instead of blowing through the instrument, you're going to sing the high, middles, and lows. It's okay if you're not a great singer. No one's going to hear you. So get your fingers set for that high note. Trigger one, two. Here we go. Whole song. High, middle, low. Stay down there. Low, 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 low. Middle, 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 middle. High, middle, low. All right. The next step is to play it. If you feel like you still need a little more practice on your fingers, go ahead and just finger and sing along with me. If you think you're ready, go ahead and play. Everybody set your fingers for the high note. Trigger one, two. Check your posture. Set your mouthpiece. Great job playing your first song. Go ahead and scroll back down to the description and click on Rhythm Reading to make it to the end of this video. Dealing with a fully assembled trombone can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're a fifth grader. A couple important things to double check before we start trying to play. Make sure that the screw connecting your bell to the slide is nice and tight. That'll stop your trombone from falling farther open, make it a little easier to hold. And then make sure your slide lock is twisted on so that your slide can't accidentally go flying. We're going to hold our trombone with just our left hand for our first note. And the way we hold it is we take our left thumb and hook it on the bell. Then we're going to put all of our fingers inside the square. If you have really tiny hands, it might be more comfortable to put your pointer finger up by your mouthpiece. But for most students, I, I try to get all the fingers inside the square. Once your left hand is set, check your posture, and then set your mouthpiece. 
Big breath. Now, a lot of students will have trouble controlling the instrument with just their left hand. Um, it's really important that we don't develop bad habits like pushing our left shoulder up or tipping our head over one way or the other. So when we check our posture, try really hard to bring the mouthpiece to your face, not your face to the mouthpiece. So check that left hand again, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Another common mistake for brass players is to get the wrong sound, either too high or too low. If you're down in the basement, the way that we're going to fix that is making sure that we have mm, lips in a straight line, no puffy cheeks, and faster air will make it jump up to the correct note. If you're too high, you need to relax your air, slow it down, and I tell the students in class to practice the horse face, which will help your lips relax. When we're ready to add our right hand onto the slide, we're going to use these three fingers to control it. So we grab the slide down at the very bottom. Um, a lot of students will try to use the caveman grip, the whole fist. That's, that doesn't work very well. First, you can't reach as far, okay? And you can end up hitting your thumb on the bell, which hurts really bad. So just these three fingers down at the bottom of the slide, and that will let you reach a little bit farther with your wrist extended and you don't run a risk of hitting the bell. Every student has received a fingering chart in class. This is an extremely important tool for learning to play our first notes. They have also received a band folder. Both items should come with students to class every single day. In the description under this video is a link to an online resource archive where you can print your own copy or a replacement as needed. The trombone fingering chart is different from the other instruments because there aren't buttons that you push, but slide positions. On your fingering chart, I gave you some clues for where each slide position is. You can also reference the inside cover of your book to see a picture um, of where each slide position is. The top note on the page is the highest note. For D, you need to be in fourth position, and your clue is past the bell, so you go away from your face, a little bit past the bell. For the middle note, you need to go to sixth position, which is going to be almost as far as you can reach your arm, especially if you're a fifth grader. And for the bottom note, home base is first position all the way in. We're going to start with the top note on your fingering chart, a D. So check your posture, turn your um, slide lock off, Set your fingers, so move the slide out past the bell just a little bit. Set your mouthpiece, great breath. Try it again. Make sure the slide is just a little bit past the bell. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. For the middle note on your fingering chart, C, you're gonna go all the way out to sixth position and you're going to need to slow your air down a little bit from the first note that we played. Big breath. Most students who make a mistake on this note will play it too high. It needs nice relaxed face and slow air. Set your fingers again in sixth position, stretched way out. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. For the lowest note, B flat, we're going to keep the slide in first position all the way in, but we're going to use really slow, relaxed air. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Let's try that one again. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Play it something called finger in sync, which means you're going to move your hand like you're playing, but instead of blowing air through the instrument, you're going to sing the high, middle, and low. Don't worry if you're not a good singer, I won't be able to hear you. Set your fingers for the uh, high note, a little bit past the bell. Here we go. 
high, middle, low, same thing again, high, middle, low, 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 middle, 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 high, middle, low. If you feel like you did a really good job and you're ready to try playing it, go ahead and play along with me. If you think you need another chance to practice just moving your hand, go ahead and finger and sing again. Get your finger set for the high note, a little bit past the bell, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. playing your first song. Go ahead and scroll back down to the description and click on Rhythm Reading to make it to the end of this video. When we're ready to play our fully assembled euphonium, remember we're going to hold by the big pipes, not any of the skinny ones because we don't want anything to bend. Your euphonium will probably only have three buttons. This is a fancy one from the high school so it has an extra one. Don't worry about that for right now. The main thing is we want to make sure that we keep our good posture even when we're holding a big instrument. So beginners a lot of times will have the bottom of the instrument sit on the chair, which means they have to hunch over to get to their mouthpiece. So we want to make sure that we hold the instrument and bring the mouthpiece up to our face, not our face down to our instrument. So check your posture, set your mouthpiece, big breath, now, some beginners will get a lower note at the beginning. We want to make sure that we have mm, lips in a straight line, no puffy cheeks, and we want fast air to get that high note. Try again. Check your posture. Set your mouthpiece. If a student's working really, really hard, they might accidentally get this note which is too high. So to get to the right note, we need to relax our air. Every student has received a fingering chart in class. This is an extremely important tool for learning to play our first notes. They have also received a band folder. Both items should come with students to class every single day. In the description under this video is a link to an online resource archive where you can print your own copy or a replacement as needed. We're going to start with the top note on our fingering chart, which is the D, and you're going to press down one and two. You want to use the tips of your fingers so that you stay nice and curved, and you have to press all the way down. And we're going to press down one and two. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. When I say set your fingers in class, I mean I actually need you to push down on the buttons. We want to start like that. Then, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. The second note on the fingering chart is C. You're going to press 1 and 3. Press down 1 and 3. And this is a lower note, so you're going to slow your air down just a little bit. And the bottom note on your fingering chart is B flat. The lowest note, it's no fingers with really slow air. No, no fingers pushed down, nice slow air. Let's try all three notes in order. High, switch your fingers. Middle, switch your fingers. Low, and we'll leave a little space between each note so you have time to get ready. Set your fingers for the high note, one and two. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Let's do that again with a little less time between each note. Set your fingers for the high note, one and two. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. One more time, even faster. Set your fingers. Set your mouthpiece.
three notes are actually the beginning of our first song. So, hot cross buttons starts with the same three notes in the same order, high, middle, low, but you're going to do that two times in a row. Let's try playing just that first part. Set your fingers for the high note, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Then the next part is low, 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 middle, 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 middle. Let's try that. Set your fingers for the low note, check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Remember, it's slow air. And then the ending is just like the beginning. High, middle, low. So now we're going to put all that together. But before we play it, we're going to do something called finger in sync, where you move your fingers like you're playing, but instead of blowing air through the instrument, you're going to sing the high, middle, and low. If you're not a good singer, don't worry. I can't hear you. So get your fingers set for that high note. One and two. Here we go. High, middle, low. Same thing again. High, middle, low. Stay down there. Low, 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 low. Middle, 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 middle. High, middle, low. If you feel like you've got it as far as your fingers go, go ahead and try playing along with me. If you think you need another uh, rep of practice, go ahead and finger and sing. Get your fingers set for the high note, one and two. Check your posture, set your mouthpiece. Great job playing your first song. Go ahead and scroll back down to the description and click on Rhythm Reading to make it to the end of this video. For our Rhythm Reading today, there are a couple new symbols, but let's start out with a review. What kind of notes are these that are colored in? That's right, quarter notes, and then the squigglies are quarter rest. Quarter note, quarter rest, same first name because they're worth the same amount, which is one steady beat. So when we do our counts, it would be one, two, three, four. We're not going to say the two or the three, we're just going to think the numbers inside our head. Our hands clap on the notes, they go apart on the rest. Tap your foot to the steady beat. Ready, go. One, four. Okay, number two, we have a half note, it's not colored in. That's worth two beats, so that would be one, two. And then this is one of our new symbols. Um, this is a half rest. Half rest, half note. They're worth the same amount, so this will also get two beats. But it's a rest, so we're not going to say anything. We're just going to think it inside our head. And remember, on half notes, we have to clap and pull because it's worth two beats. Tap your foot, number two. Ready, go. One, two. On the rest, you notice I bounced my hands along with the steady beat. That's going to help make sure that we think the numbers in the right amount of time. Okay? Number three is another new symbol. And before you say half rest, look really carefully at our half rest and then look at the new symbol. They're different, right? The half rest. We have a square on top of the line. The whole rest is underneath the line. The way I like to explain this is if there was a person walking on this line, they would fall into the hole because it's a whole rest. Now, a whole rest is going to be worth the same amount as a whole note. So both of these are going to be worth four beats. So one, two, three, four, but we're not going to say anything. And one, two, three, four, but you're going to clap, pull, pull, pull. Let's try three and four together because they're very similar. Here we go. Tap your foot. 
Ready, go. One, two, three, four. Great. Now let's do one, two, three, and four without stopping. Eyeballs on the board. Tap your foot. Ready, go. One, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. That's a really long combination of rests, so it's very important that we're thinking the numbers inside our heads so that we don't get lost. Let's try one, two, three, and four again, this time without any help from Mr. Shapker. Tap your foot. Ready, go. One, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. We covered a lot of information in today's video. It's likely that you'll need more than one viewing to really master the skills that we discussed. Keep in mind, this video covers about two weeks of band class. That's five meetings. If you're in need of help, you have an expert in your house, talk to your fifth grader. Or even better, play along with your fifth grader. The next video coming out is a practice video. This one will be shorter, but will give you an opportunity to practice with a lot of repetition the skills that we've been working on. Happy practicing!